Mr. Ed here, enjoying a very atypical late December day in Louisiana. Right now it's 76 degrees, I think is what the phone said just a little while ago. Man, it's just gorgeous out here. I can imagine everybody up north, they, they in snow wearing all that heavy coats and I'm in short sleeves today. Beautiful weather, beautiful sunshine, man. It's just gonna be a great day. And what I'm gonna be doing today is, but I like just doing this project, rendering beeswax. And I'm going to be rendering beeswax of different origins. It'll, I'll be rendering some old beeswax, uh, old comb, be rendering some cappings that had been outside for probably two or three weeks so they get a little different state of dirt in them and then cappings that have never been exposed to the sunlight they've been in a garbage can since we did the processing of that honey back in late June. I'm headed over to the honey house right now start getting things set up and I'll probably go ahead and light the kettle to start getting the water to burn, and burn, to boil, so that we can speed things up. So by the grace of God, this project's going to take, oh, at least four days. Oh, there's a church bell ringing. It'll probably take four or five days to do all this, and I'll give you the, the development of how the rendering is going. By the grace of God, at the end of four or five days, we'll have a nice, nice, stack of wax for all different kinds of purposes here at the Abbey. Let's go wrangle up some bees and enjoy some of that bells from the church for a few seconds. Now here are the three different types of wax that we're going to be rendering. This one, this, this is just comb for cutouts. What I do with this stuff is I just put it in these bags, these plastic bags, and put it in the freezer to kill anything that's in the wax, any eggs, larvae, anything like that. Kill it, and then at that point I can take it out and render it. I won't be dealing with that. But still even so, here's some wax moth larva right here. Not larva, but the, the webbing, the silk right here. That's why I put it in the, in the freezer to get rid of any of that things that are alive in there. Now, our next sampling is going to be the cappings that Charlie and I did for our winter harvest. And though there's still some bees trying to <laughs> get something out of it in here, it's not, there's nothing in here. Look how this stuff is all dried out and it's it's ready to be rendered. And the degree of trash, if you want to call that, that's in the wax, is going to be always getting less from the amount in the comb that we do from cutouts to the comb that we have from our cappings that's been exposed to the bees walking on it, traveling on it, bringing dirt in there, or just the air and the dirt, the, the dirt in the air that settles in here. So there's still going to be dirt in this. But by far, the best wax that we can do is, and, and with the least amount of rendering, is our capping wax that we got from our bees back in June when we harvest it. And this is a garbage can full of it. And I mean, look how beautiful this stuff is. There's been no bees on this. It, it went from the frames right into this drum after it was, after we went through all its wax, went through the honey wax separator. So very dry, really good stuff. And this will come out the cleanest, even though it's never had bees in it, it's still going to have dirt and stuff in it. 
I want to close this bag up before we get any bees coming up because you can smell the honey. As soon as I open that up, you can smell the honey and the bees are coming. Let me close this up. We're going to get over to the where the kettle is. And here we are in one of the little buildings that I house a bunch of woodenware <laughs> and junk. Well, there's some more junk and parts of our beehives right here as well. But I also keep our kettle here. And let me tell you a little bit about this kettle. This, this kettle was in the monk's kitchen prior to the flood in 2016. And at that point, when they got all new equipment in there because of, the, of the, the water damage, I took this out of there, refurbished it, and got it back up into running shape. And I use it now um, in our honey processing or rendering wax or decrystallization. I have two of these. One is in this building and then the other one is in the Abbey Honey building where we process our honey and that's the one I use to decrystallize honey in. But this one, this one really gets a lot of abuse <laughs> because I put some really nasty stuff in it so it doesn't look all that pretty but it works really good after it was refurbished. As you can tell, I've already got water in it and we're going to go ahead and deposit <laughs> all this wax that's in here. It won't take long for this to melt and we'll see what comes out after it, it, it's all melted down. And there will be considerable amount of debris in this one as there's brood comb and in brood comb we have cocoons. And that cocoon, that, that silk, it will all just float up. Now what I have in there, in the kettle, in the gate right inside of here, in the throat of the gate, I put a piece of screen in there to catch debris from floating out. And that way I can just open up my, my gate right here and let all the liquid come out. And initially I won't even strain this stuff. Whatever comes out will come out and this, the net inside of the throat right here We'll catch most of this stuff, the big stuff, all the cocoons. And then this, this wax is going to have to be rendered again. Now let's open up our lid and we're going to dump in all of our wax. And there it is inside of our kettle. Let's see if the liquid water that I have underneath. I've got about a gallon of water in there. And this is not going to take long for this stuff to melt down. So we'll check back with this in just a few minutes, maybe no more than 10 minutes, and it should be done. And it's done now. I put the timer on it and that took exactly three minutes and three seconds to get it down to this state. So I'm going to put the strainer over my bucket, the catch bucket, and we'll open that gate up and find out what comes out. Now here is all that trash. The cocoons, all that trash that was in that wax, and most of it has stayed behind inside of our kettle. There is the screen that I stick inside of the throat of the gate to prevent all that debris from passing through. Now it's going to take easily half an hour for the liquid water that's sitting on the bottom of that to pass through the gate and you can see the little trickle of wax and that's all wax that's coming out right now that's coming out from that 
it's almost time for lunch. I'm going to go ahead, go eat lunch, which gives this the perfect time for her to finish draining out, or almost draining out. And I'll show you the debris that's inside of the tank. After an hour and a half, back at it. And this is what our kettle is looking like now. It's still very warm. And the nasty stuff in here, you can see it's still wet or damp. But there's very, very little wax in there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, clean up our screen, clean it up a little bit, and we're going to start our next batch. The cappings that Charlie and I got out a couple weeks ago, it's going to be our next batch. Just going to scoop them out of here, put them into my box with my little bag, and bring the bag over to the honey house and put it in the kettle. Now because the cappings are so much cleaner than the comb that we did from cutouts, I don't even have the screen in there. We'll just go ahead and render this down and just run it through the strainer and it's not going to take that long. There's not that much in here. It probably weighs about mm, not, like 10 pounds or so. Let's go ahead and open our lid. There's our wax all poured in. There's a little bit of debris in there. Some pine needles, some leaves. But for the most part, it's pretty clean, but we'll catch that all through the strainer. Let's time this and see how long it takes for this stuff to melt. And there you have it. All melted down, and it took every bit of seven minutes and three seconds. Wow, fast. Now let's go ahead and run this through the strainer, get the kettle cleaned up one more time, and run at least one or two batches of our cappings from when we did our extracting in June. With our kettle now drained, you can see the residual dirt <laughs> that was left behind in the kettle. And I mean, this is like I don't know, a third of what was left behind from when we did the rendering of the comb. And let me show you a picture of what I filtered out with the screen. screen a little bit in that as well I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up one more time I drug the barrel <laughs> from the honey house into here I get the kettle loaded up with water get it heated up now we're gonna start our next batch all right from the looks of it my kettle's ready to get loaded up again open it up and we'll start scooping in some of that capping wax.
But believe it or not, that took five minutes and 45 seconds to completely melt all that wax. Now this time, I'm not going to even put the strainer on it. I'm going to let, let the whole kettle just drain right into my bucket. And we're going to find out what kind of mess we're going to get on it after. But all the, the nasty stuff should get to the bottom of the wax, not, the, not to the top. But anyway, we'll find out. So let's go ahead and drain it right now. And as our wax is finishing draining out from the kettle, into our bucket. Look at the difference between the crud that was in this wax as opposed to the crud that was in the last batch that we did. And this probably had three times the amount of wax in it. So even though bees don't get on the wax when they're making it, it still is a mess. Because this wax had never been outside. Uh, it hadn't had bees trafficking on it. And it still has a well, significant amount of debris in there. And usually what I find is that when I do the cappings from our honey frames, I don't even need to use the screen. That the residue just sticks to the bottom of the brick that comes out of the bucket. And as it finishes dripping out, Man, it's some beautiful, beautiful looking color. This is going to be that creamy wax. It's going to be beautiful, beautiful color. And here are our three buckets of wax. Now this bucket was the one with the comb. And I'm telling you, I don't think we're going to even get a block of wax that's half an inch thick on this one. This is, this was hardly even worth the work to get it. But you can see the color is it's a, a more yellow color. This was the cappings that from Charlie and I when we did that fall harvest. And it's going to be a little bit lighter color yellow, but it's still going to be a, a shade of yellow, but more clear, I think, in this one. And this is our last rendering that we just now did with all the cappings from our honey harvest back in July. And this will come out a, a, a really beautiful pale uh, cream color and we'll see exactly what the results of these things are tomorrow morning but for now we'll close this video out good morning day two of our rendering of the beeswax and I'm always anxious to see two things uh, first to see how much we got of the wax and the quality of it, the color of it. So I am looking uh, forward to seeing that and getting some more of those cappings from our harvest in June done today. Hopefully I can get about two or three more of those things done today because I, re I really want to go through all of my wax that I have in, in preparation for in two months when we start doing our frames, when we're doing our foundations, getting those things ready. 70 degrees, 72 degrees, I think it was it was said. A little bit overcast today, but still a, a great, glorious December in Louisiana. So, but as the building that houses our kettle, and we're headed right there to find out what our wax looks like. And here are our buckets. Uh, I put those lids on there mostly to keep the bees from flying in there as that wax is cooling. But it also is supposed to help um, as the wax cools not to crack the surface. And this is that first one. And I know we didn't get very much in, in the wax from this one. It was just not a lot of wax in that cone. This was our second one. These are from the cappings of the ones that Charlie and I did just a few weeks ago. Eh, it's a little bit of wax. And then this one, oh, <laughs> I guess it didn't help too much with cooling to prevent the cracking. But this one is from all the cappings. 
and it didn't do too good keeping the bees out either because a bee got in there as well. Now it's time to find out exactly how big these bricks of wax are going to be. And here is the final results of our efforts. Now, <laughs> this this hardly even worth the trouble it was, but it's still a really pretty, pretty color. And we'll add this to some more of that wax that we'll be mixing together, and it'll just go into making that brick a little bit bigger. Our second one, this is the cappings from the harvest that we did just in, in December. Uh, it's nice. We weighed this block. It was right at five pounds, this block right here. Really pretty. And you see the difference in the color between the two from the cappings and the comb that had brewed in it. And this is so much more yellow and it's starting to clear up in the cappings here. Now this one we had we had some darker comb in there, so that's probably why we had uh, um, a little bit yellower color to it. Remember, this is just the first rendering. The more you render it, the clearer it will get. And then our final brick. Look at that. The bees. You see the bee on it? <laughs> yeah, they smell the honey that's on this stuff. The final one, look at that. That's a beautiful one. And you can see the color in this one as opposed to color in this one the difference in, in that and the one here on, in my left hand that is all the cappings and so it's it was all white so it's a lot clearer and, and more clear than, than the one here in my right hand and I weighed this block right here it was 11 pounds that's a nice brick of wax now I'm going to, today I'm going to be continuing doing the rendering of the cappings that are in that garbage can. Hopefully I'll, I don't think I'll be able to get it all done today, but I'll get at least three more of, of the blocks and they should come out about this because I'll, I'll still put like 10 or 11 scoops of the cappings in the kettle to bring it down. So they all should look like this. and. After I do all that, I'll, I'll give you a shot of what all that looks like. It's been two hours since I started, and look at that. I managed to get three of them done. I just put that one up. That one is just put on here. Let's show you what I got. This is the, actually, this one is not cappings. This is, I kind of just went around in the building right here picking up wax. And I made one block of that. That'll be an interesting color on that one. This one was all the cappings from the garbage can. And then this one right here I just put on right there. So that's great. I have three more good blocks of wax. But that's it for today. <laughs> Well, it's only been maybe six, seven days. I can't remember. We had Christmas and we had New Year's. And the really significant thing that's gone on since that time is, golly, it's gotten cold. We, our temperatures yesterday uh, went from like 80 degrees to 35 degrees. And it's just like, it's, it's beautiful outside right now. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Today is Monday. And, I mean, I got up about six layers of clothes on. I can't stand this cold weather. But I want to show you where we are with that, our last batch of rendering of, our, of that wax. Let me show you that. And I'm going to render out one more batch uh, today, hopefully today. And there are our buckets with our lids on it. Oh, nice. Ooh, that one is perfect, beautiful, nice. Ooh, and that one's pretty funky broken up. All right, I'm going to take these three buckets. I'm going to dump it out, and then I'll show you the results of these wax that's inside of here. I'm going to go ahead and weigh them, too, and let you know what they, what they weighed. 
Look at these beauties, huh? Wow. Look at that. Oh, that is so sweet looking. Oh, if you could smell that. Oh, it's just such a clean, fresh smell. This block of wax, this was just a bunch of wax that I had all around here and I just threw it all together. I weighed this one and it's somewhere, somewhere between 12 and 14 pounds is what this block weighs. Don't roll away. <laughs> this one, which was all cappings, huh, smells every bit as good as that one. A little bit smaller than that one. And this is somewhere between 9 and 10 pounds. That scale I use, it's kind of hard for me to read it all the time, so it's not a real accurate uh, scale, so that's why I'm guessing at it. But it's, it's somewhere between 9 and 10 pounds. And the last one, don't go nowhere. Oh, it's so nice. So if you could, I can only wait till YouTube does the smell of vision in their videos because it's going to go big when it does. If you could smell this, it's, it's, I always say that freshly rendered wax smells like a spring morning because <laughs> it just smells so good and fresh. And this one right here, somewhere between 12 and 13 pounds, this block right here, all ready to go. The kettle is just about ready for our last batch and I'm going to throw the last batch of cappings in it and after that I'll put that in a bucket and we'll be able to close up the video <laughs> when that one comes out of the bucket. And there it is, the last batch, at least for the first rendering at least. I'll cover this up and check back with it tomorrow and we'll try to close this video out tomorrow after we take this block and this is a big block out of the bucket all right 24 hours later well almost <laughs> let's see what we're looking like oh yeah got a big old crack in it but that's all right that is going to be one big chunk of wax right there all right now i'm going to go ahead and knock it out and then i'll show you what it looks like holding it in my hand <laughs> And here it is, set loose from the bucket. That is another gorgeous, gorgeous block of wax. Weighed up and, and uh, it, it came out, I don't know, somewhere between 12 and 14 pounds, guessing on it. But I did <laughs> weigh all of these blocks of wax right here and they weighed out to 76 pounds. Well, 76, 77, 75, somewhere in there. So I'm gonna say 76. I mean, for for my first rendering, this is this is really great. Now they still have to be rendered one more time because this is only the first time for them. And I get get them cleaned out one more time, and at that point, I'll be able to to give one of these blocks to Brother Austin for monk soap over there. And the rest, we're going to be going to use those things to put on our plastic foundations. Yep. <laughs> so, man, this is just a, a fantastic, fantastic deal. Oh my God. So, okay. thanks for watching. Keep on watching. I'll be making more. God bless. <laughs> Mr. Ed, I'm out of here until the next video.